This is the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 227 of This is the G Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. You know what's up. Uh-huh. Man, the American heat. I am Tommy B. Stay cool, y'all. Literally, uh, we're seeing uh, temps in the uh, upper 90s in the ATL, but we're kind of used to it. Many of you aren't. So protect yourself in the sweltering heat this summer. And again, this is the G Podcast. Each week we do news, politics, pop culture, and that piping hot tea from the one and only Tanya B. And of course, Tanya B has that hot tea coming up in just a few. Syracuse Mike has your news update. The Say Hey Kid, Willie Mays has died. Uh, the Newsmaker Crew is coming up, and we'll talk about, uh, man, the GOP adding heat with more divisive culture wars. But we'll talk about that in a few. After news with Syracuse Mike. Mike, what you got? News team, assemble! For the week in news with Syracuse Mike. You know that warning you see on cigarette packages? Now the U.S. Surgeon General is asking for a similar warning label to be included on social media platforms. Dr. Vivek Murthy addressed the issue in a New York Times op-ed piece. He also said in part in a post on X, In May 2023, I outlined recommendations to make social media safer for kids. Yet parents and children are still waiting for change. I issue a renewed call for legislators to take action. President Biden called it a common sense fix when he announced a new plan to provide a pathway to citizenship for undocumented people married to U.S. citizens. The plan would offer relief to more than a half million mixed status families in the country. There was also this for dreamers, those undocumented children brought to the U.S. who are now adults. I'm announcing new measures to clarify and speed up work visas to help people, including dreamers, who have graduated from U.S. colleges and universities, landed jobs in high-demand, high-skill professions that we need to have to grow, to see our economy grow. The announcement of the executive orders at the White House Tuesday, marking the 12th anniversary of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA. Baseball great Willie Mays has died. When he retired, he had 660 home runs. At one point, that was third best in the league. Until his death Tuesday, he was the greatest living Hall of Famer. The Say Hey Kid was 93. Following a similar decision in Louisiana, a top Texas Republican has pledged to pass a bill that would force public schools to display the Ten Commandments. Dan Patrick, the state's lieutenant governor, said he would pass Texas Bill 1515, mandating that the commandments be displayed in all classrooms. This will come up in the next session of the state Senate. Actor Donald Sutherland has died. Sutherland was 88 and best known for his versatility on screen. He played Hawkeye Pierce in the movie version of MASH, starred in the Oscar-winning movie Ordinary People, and was the villain President Snow in The Hunger Games. The announcement of Donald Sutherland's passing was posted on social media by his son, Kiefer Sutherland. Thanks, Mike, for the headlines. Uh, Tlaib is in the building. Tlaib Shabazz, yes. What's up? What's up? By the country commentators in the building, man. And, and I got to say congrats to the Boston Celtics, y'all. Come on. The haters out there talking about they had an easy path. Now they just kicked everybody's ass during the regular season. It was easy after that. So, I mean, Boston Celtics just took care of business. That's just what it is. All right, y'all. Hey, um, you know, a lot, lot going. You know what? We should, we, we should just roll tape when we talk like before the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's stuff I like that stuff I rather keep to myself. My kid yeah, did not, my kid didn't even know all my be- devilish behaviors when I was yes, growing up. Yes, yes. <laughs> Those summers. <laughs> summer, summer. Yeah, no. oh boy. I hope everybody really uh had a great Juneteenth though. Uh Juneteenth holiday. Um, you know, and, and I really am starting to get into the groove of the national holiday and I, I'm at, at first, you know, y'all, I you know, I'm East Coast grew up in the south uh i didn't understand juneteenth but i know the texas part mm. you know anybody from texas they has know. always celebrated and, and been a big you know juneteenth has been a big part of their lives uh but i'm really getting into the groove man but you know some folks still want to be haters uh, about juneteenth <laughs> and you know you've got a lot of how do you call it manufactured leadership and this was it valentina gomez who's running for secretary of state in uh, Missouri. And this is the reason why people need to go out and vote. You know, she is the reason why you got to vote. You know, if there was any reason to vote, 
this is a reason to vote in Missouri. Uh, she hates everybody. She hates gays. She hates immigrants. She's an immigrant. And she definitely hates black folks, you know, or anybody who likes Juneteenth. She called Juneteenth a ratchet holiday, uh, denounced reparations. And, um, and here's a quote she said. Uh, and and she, also she had asked black people basically to, to leave the country if they don't like the country. It, you know, here we, we, we're we here, <laughs> not of our own accord, but she's asking us to leave the country. But the quote is, uh, reparations from slavery and black victimization is about to be shoved down our throats um, for this ratchet holiday in America. BLM, Black Lives Matter, raised millions. And what did they do for black lives? So, you know, she's 25 years old. And basically, I say manufactured because, you know, it's a situation where, you know, they're looking for people who are going to uh, push these culture wars and divide everybody and push the fringe uh, because that's how they get attention. So what, what are your thoughts? And I'll start with you, Talib. I just want to know what it is about America that makes people kind of lose their sense of self hmm. when they get here. Um, yeah. Your last name is Gomez. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't play her quote you know because I mean? she sounds like what? Like, yo, um, she's <laughs> she straight in. You know, just got here, yeah. dude. It's it's like, you know. Again, I'm not trying to sit here and debate with people about their political affiliations, mm -hmm. but you've got no sense of self, right? You forget who you are because you moved to America. You know, and you're so American now that you want to tell somebody that they need to leave. <laughs> yeah. You know, look, I, I can prove my people were always here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether yeah. it's the Ottomans or whether it's the what the natives, you know what I mean? Look, man, mm -hmm. there were always people of melanin on this part of the world. It wasn't just Africa. It was Australia. It's New Zealand. We were everywhere, y'all. We were in China. We were in Japan. People with melanin. So this whole, you know, no, you need to leave. How about that? <laughs> because you, I mean, somebody was, I was watching something about, uh, um, uh, maybe, maybe it was the Turks. Maybe it was um, Rashad Ritchie or something. But yeah, it, it's, you got the Republican Party are the ones who are frustrated with the way this country is going. Yeah. You don't want gays around. You don't want blacks around. You don't want Mexicans or any other minority uh, immigrant around. So why don't you just leave? Yeah. Yeah. Find another. You were the imports. You yeah. are all Europeans. Mm -hmm. And in old school American law, the people that were coming over to the new world were all considered Europeans. Mm -hmm. The yep. Americans were the people who were here already. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna go to you, Vi. Well, I just think it's just is ignorant on her part. Like you want to act like we're not part of your history, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> act, give us our credit. <laughs> White people did not build America. Yeah, no. At my point, I think I know I would be if y'all gave us some credit and acknowledge our history and acknowledge what you've done, then maybe we'll be okay. But y'all want to whitewash America like we built America. No, you didn't. Every <laughs> war y'all won, we played a major role in it. Yes. Every war y'all, even the fight for independence, we we was in that. Yeah. So, dang, how you how dare you tell us to leave? I don't remember, you go back to what, the 1776? I don't see no Mexicans in that. Yeah. We're in it. And we asked to be in it, but we're in it. Yeah. Vietnam Wars. I mean, who they talk about the most? Who we have been more racist and put down more than any other ethnic in America. And y'all don't want to acknowledge. And then y'all want us to get we probably would get over it if y'all would acknowledge it. If y'all yeah, talk about history in school. Yeah. Just acknowledge it. But y'all don't even want to acknowledge it. I mean, y'all mm -hmm. wanna make make it feel like a uh, the white folks of America, this great white hope that y'all are so great. Y'all are some of the worst people in the history of the, of the country. Yeah. Acknowledge that and say we're changing or we have changed, but you don't even want to do that. And the problem is, I think the problem with y'all, 
y'all are so afraid that a white man, white people or white man can't he's gonna lose his role as the most as powerful person in America because y'all not the dominant race anymore. Yeah, but y'all want to keep that title. We all melting pot, and that when when that when that one time when that all cry of being so great by men in America been melting pot, but now y'all want to say we don't need y'all no more. But y'all should have said that two thousand years ago. Look, well, you know, Vi, Vi, let me say this, man, and, and I'll, I'll let you jump back in, Lee. You know, one of the things, and, and I see it for what it is, you know, I, I see it as a ploy for relevance, you know, because you, you've got, they if, if, if she were a candidate and she came in middle of the road, she'd get no attention. So the only way you get attention is to come out, make these kind of incendiary comments and piss people off. But you also, again, <laughs> you know it's red meat for that base that also loves Trump. So it's an alignment with the Trump base. So, so you know, it, it's, it's so obvious now that, you know, I think the only way you can defeat it, you know, is just vote. I don't even, I, mean, I was thinking about playing the comment on the show and I, I don't want her voice on my podcast. I mean, I just said, look, I'll read the, you know, comment. I, I see people playing it on their podcast and then, you know, responding to it. And, and you know, it doesn't deserve that. It does they deserve... Don't. You know, what it does deserve is just an acknowledgement to support our argument that, you know, we're not starting this shit. People are talking about, well, we out here race bait. No, we just, respond. you know, it's just shit we got to respond to and, and let people know because there are a lot of people who don't understand. Just like, you know, I was so happy this week that Reggie Jackson came out and talked about the racism he dealt with in the 70s because a lot of people really try to, you know, I call them, they do the revisionist history. They go back and say, well, you know, this shit didn't exist. Oh, Reggie, Reggie Jackson. Oh, yes, it did. I mean, when he talks about the fact that he, you know, at um, this was the historic Negro League field in Birmingham, Rick, Rick Wood Field. And oh. he, he talks about, you know, he he wouldn't wish what happened to him. He's playing for the Oakland A's. This is the 70s. I remember this. I mean, you remember if you knew the, the power of Reggie Jackson. He's talking about, you know, getting turned away at hotels, you know, when he's traveling. You know, he's talking about not being able to eat at restaurants. He said, y'all can eat here. But he was using the N-word. He's like, that nigga. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, it, it was just, he's, he's talking. Alabama. Yes. He, but he's talking about, like, all across the country. It wasn't just Birmingham, but definitely he's talking. He's talking about having to sleep on uh, his teammates' couches because they wouldn't let him stay, and you know, at certain apartments. <laughs> Um, I mean, so I'm glad that Reggie's out here talking about it because a lot of people want to say, you know, it didn't happen. And yes, it right. did. So if you tr if you understand what these people went through, then maybe you'll have a little bit more sensitivity about, you know, instead of coming out saying that we shouldn't be celebrating this holiday or it's ratchet. I mean, you know, that's, that's but 25 years old needs to be relevant, you know, trying to trying to just throw some red meat to a base, you know, that exists under Trump. That's what she's trying to do. Go back to you to leave and we'll wrap this. Yeah, I just think we're at a uh, we're at a time where the United States has really just become bizarro world. Yep. You know, That's exactly I know it. I've said it before, but you know, when you look at Superman's nemesis Bizarro, mm -hmm. he was the, the exact opposite of <laughs> Superman. So if yes. Superman was handsome, he was not. Mm -hmm. If he, you know, Superman wears an S on his chest, the S on Bizarro's chest was backwards. Yeah. Um, and like I said, man, how is, a, you know, I like intelligent people. Mm -hmm. I, and everybody has something to offer, you know? So I don't want to discount anything that anyone has to say in terms of age, but 25 years old, you want to talk about some, anything? Yeah. With a knowledge of nothing, yeah. it just doesn't make sense to me. No, like, I mean, you, know, yeah, you, you yeah. need to come way, way better than this. And see, know? that's why I get upset to leave with a lot of these, you know, southern states who just don't vote. Because mm -hmm. not only are you dealing with that, you know, in, in, you know in Missouri and, and, and the likes of somebody like this running for secretary of state, but you got people who are voting for the Ten Commandments to be placed in these schools, which, you know, your kids, Texas is now the newest state to come out with this, uh, this bill. Uh, and they'll probably pass it to put 10 commandments in classrooms. Louisiana's already done it. Now, Texas is ranked, what, 41st 
<laughs> out of 50 states in education, and, and Louisiana is either 47th or 49th. Your kids can't even read it. Right. <laughs> first. <laughs> you know, they can't comprehend it based on what we're seeing in the stats. You know, and, and, and second, what is it going to do? What is it going to do? What it's going to do is it's going to tie up the court systems with these frivolous lawsuits mm -hmm. um, that try to paint America as this Christian nation when it's never been a Christian nation. Yeah. You know, this has been a, this has always been a nation that's free to worship and and be who you are. And that's not what these these people are really trying to make this country into something that the founding fathers did not want. And, and you've people... got you've got Alito, Thomas, and uh, Barrett, who, who and, and even maybe uh, what's his name? I forgot the, the newer uh, one, uh, mm. the frat boy. Oh who yeah, probably yeah. align with that. I don't think the chief justice would... Kavanaugh. No, yeah, Ka yeah, Kavanaugh is the frat boy. Mm. Chief Justice has already came out and said, you know, in a comment, he said, you know, we're not, you know, we're not a Christian nation. Uh, you know, based on the Constitution, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. But, but you're, you know, and, and you're right. I mean, a, a lot of this is, you know, again, we go back to culture wars, but it's not going to do anything to raise your state from being 47th to 49th in education or your state being 41st in education. You need to be trying to fix the fact that your kids can't read. I'm going right. to go to you, Vi, Vi, real quick. Now, are they making it mandatory or are they having the option to put it in, in, oh, the, in no, the classroom? Oh, no, mandatory. It's no, mandatory. That's, it's yeah, that's that mandatory. Yeah, it's I, mandatory. Yeah. yeah, this should not be mandatory. No. I mean, why are you going to go, if I'm a teacher and I'm not a Christian, why are you making me put that in my classroom? Yeah, but see, that's the point. Right. Yeah. But, you know, that's going to be, instead of talking about the fact that you, you, your cities are falling apart, you know, or, or, or looking at the fact that, you know, you got, especially in a lot of these uh, rural areas, you don't have hospitals. You know, you're, yeah. you're losing, you know, health care. Uh, you know, there's so much, so many other things these people could be talking about <laughs> than this that they need for, I mean, it, it, but they're going to, they're going to win votes. I mean, it's culture wars, man. And, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. And, and again, you know, I can find fault in both these parties. But the, the issue I have with the GOP is they never put anything forward to really help the yeah. country. They haven't lately, you know. They're and, more, to me, they're more about do as I say. Yeah, it's culture. Everything culture. is do as I say. We know what's yeah. bad for y'all. That's that's not what our country is built on. That's not what we fought all these wars for. Yeah, right. We fought all these wars for rights, and y'all just want to take, the, take it away and say, do as I say, and then y'all all the time about Y'all believe in states' right, but y'all don't believe in states' right. Y'all believe in y'all yeah. right. Y'all don't believe in anybody's rights. No, you don't. Don't. <laughs> but you know, they, they never they never put forth an alternate plan. That's what I see. I never well, they, see they never see for anything. No solution. And and that's mm -hmm. the problem. People, somebody said, "Well, why would you ever, why would you never consider the Republican Party?" I said, "Because they don't stand for any. I mean, what they stand for is shit that I really it doesn't matter. It is it's not going to fix the issues I'm dealing they with don't. on a daily basis." You know, you talk about, okay, well, inflation and this, but what are you going to do about it? Right. Oh, well, you know, we, we're going to get in office. Okay, so what are you going to do about it when you get in office? And we're still going to have a plan. And my thing, Republicans, don't, the only people who really say going to vote Republicans are, are rich people, rich yeah. black people. Oh, yeah, so that's why all I care about. Why I put a middle class or poor black man, what reason I have to vote for you because you're not doing anything for me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your and, and your only answer is vote for me. The Democrat ain't done that for you lately, but at least I think they're trying. Y'all are telling us, even if the Democrat is not trying, they say they are trying. But y'all yeah. are telling us that y'all not going to try. Yeah. Just, yeah. It just, yeah. Y'all telling us, we're not going to do okay. anything for y'all. Yeah. N nothing. Just put on your boots and work hard. That's how you're going to make it. We did that. And y'all, and when we do that and get a success, y'all find a reason or a way to take that from us. Yeah. So y'all make it harder for us to be a successful. I'm gonna vote for y'all. I, I just, I, I just can't, I can't vote for, I can't vote for anybody who wants to take my rights away. Right. No. The rights, any rights that are that are already in the Constitution, and, and, and you know, people laugh at me when I say they're coming after the Thirteenth next. Don't laugh. They are. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> we don't they laugh. At they come at because anything that go against them, they're coming after. And, and the reason I say that is because. They feel that the country can stand on its own, 
without the federal yeah. government. And and I have to say, you know, better leave these things alone because not everybody's looking out for our best interest. So right. last last I'll go to you to leave on, on this. Nah, I ain't got nothing else to say about this <laughs> silly chick. It's silly. You know, you know, but again, man, it's we really just need to as a as a voter, we really have to look at who's trying to get in and why. Yeah. And that's it. I mean not not only but yeah, yeah, why is the is the answer. Why why are you running? Right. Yeah. All right. Hey hey Vi, what you got this any any big thing stands out for you this week? Well, I like that um that message you sent about by, you know, I think it was on TikTok and Instagram about this, uh, this young black man was was showing us why he's not born Republican. I never, Boykin, Boykin, Boykin. Yeah, I never uh, the writer. Yeah, I never mm-hmm. put it that way. But when he showed me all the people who were Republicans going. That's the reason enough. I'm not give me a a, a a legitimate good black candidate that maybe I would consider. Because every legitimate black candidate y'all have, they're a downgrading our race. Yeah, they are going to the extreme. So why would I want to vote for a, a black man when he go to the extreme to downgrade his own race? Just be Republican. Yeah, Show me right. somebody who's going to say who believe in black people, who support some of the black panel stuff, who support yeah. Martin Luther King. But you got the folks saying the opposite stuff, like this coon in Florida yeah. talking about Jim Crow Day. Yeah, dude, why you even bring that up? Why? Well, that, that's no. the representative who said, uh, you know, basically we were better off during we're better off. You know, the, the only comment no. that, and, and this is some blacks who might believe, the only thing that really may have thrived during Jim Crow was black business. Because, you know, we had to go to certain businesses and weren't allowed um, to white or mainstream businesses. And and I've heard, and, and correct me if I'm wrong to leave, because, you know, you may, you, and, and both you guys. But the bottom line is they felt that maybe black owned businesses thrived because shit, that's the only place we could go. It was either, you know, black business or in, in, in many cases you had, you know, Jewish businesses or, you know, uh, uh, the Jewish population who were moving to black communities and own property or own the corner store. But outside of that, it, it's like, come on, dude. I mean, yeah. and, 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 you know, here he is. And, and you know, the other thing, and, and we were laughing, well, not it's kind of funny, but it's not. Most of these dudes are married to white women. Yeah. You know, and everything they did, everything <laughs> so the government, like, it, my you thing know. is, everything the government did to get us better and get us past the Jim Crow day, y'all yeah. are taking all that stuff away. Affirmative right, yeah. taking that away. Grant for black women, taking that away. Yeah. Y'all, everything y'all did to make us better through Jim Crow, y'all taking that way to get us back to Jim Crow. So well, the, funny, no. the funny thing uh. is, you're married to white women. And part of this, if you heard Clarence Thomas, is also married to a white woman. Yeah, I think one yeah, of the you, things they're talking about is immigrant. I mean, uh, interracial marriage. I mean, so yeah. you know, there there was something on the table. You know, well, where you know they'd step in and you know, and and make it the state's right to choose whether or not <laughs> interracial. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying specifically, but mm-hmm. it came up in an argument. But you know, you never, um, but none of them ever said he married to a white woman. That never no, comes up. It never comes up. Not, I mean, you know, you marry and love who you love. That's your choice. I, but, I but, agree uh, with you on that. But be proud yeah, but, of it then. If you're so yeah. happy, if you, be proud of it. And start to my black family. Let me ask you, Vi, and I ask you, Tlaib, mm. do, do you think when, you know, when, when, when they marry interracially, they are avoiding conflict by saying these things or, or avoiding the race issue? No, no. I mean, the people who, I don't think all interracial marriage does that, but the ones who speak like that. So I, so you telling me that they really believe that they really believe down in their soul, or they doing doing anything to please their white and to please the Republican Party? Because they sure ain't doing it to try to please Black America. Well, well I, mean, I know, I know white women who will say, "Look, fuck this." I mean, y'all, you know, and, and they they stand. As strong, I mean, who may be, and what I say, there's white women in an interracial marriage who are, are just as strong on black issues as their husband. I, you know, you I, know, to, I, I think you I have know a to, lot of that too. You have to uh-huh. now if you don't, because your kid black now. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Right. And they'll say, I, they'll say, <laughs> they'll tell their kids, even the white women will tell their kids, look, you're black. You're yeah, considered right. black. You consider Go ahead, black. I have to leave. Mm-hmm. So, two things. Yeah. Um, I actually had a teacher like that, Mrs. Rudolph, 
here mm -hmm. at, um, in Atlanta at Northside. Um, and she was married to the principal who was a white man. But she was also, her ex-husband was Reverend Guy from Morehouse. Oh, yes. Which is which means that she's Jasmine Guy's mother. Mm -hmm. And yo, before I knew that, Miss um, Rudolph had a conversation with her English class, you know, where she was definitely in, in very unapologetic terms letting us know that if we don't get our shit together, you know, we're going to be in a world of hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, and she was like, and you got to realize it's harder for you as a black, as black people. No. And I'm like, and I'm sitting up there looking at her like, how the hell does she even know? I get, like, it, it's true. What you're saying is true. <laughs> but, you know, how, who are you to tell me about that? Yeah. And then when, you know, they're like, yo, that's Jasmine Guy's mom. It's like, oh, okay. Well, she understands that. So now I can really, you know, accept, I can accept a little better what she's trying to say. Yeah. Um, so yes, we there are people like that do become advocates, and we definitely always need advocates. But I don't necessarily. I'm like I feel like um, you know Louis Farrakhan feels. I don't need you advocating to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, advocate to your people. Yes, They're the ones who the need thing. to hear this. That's the thing. I, yes, we are all on the same page. You got this knowledge. You 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 accept the knowledge. Yeah. what it is now take that knowledge back to your folks yeah. you know be Moses <laughs> you and, and you know what, what? I mean? and, and, and I have to ask uh, my my Latina Hispanic friends community y'all need to step to Valentina and say look you and I come from the same place okay I don't appreciate you saying this shit about my friends and my because because a lot of my friends are part of the Juneteenth, you know, history. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't agree with you saying that. Right. You know, it, it ain't the time. It's not the time to be quiet. You need to mm -hmm. step to them. And I agree with you 100 percent to leave. You know, the people who want to advocate for you don't need to be silent. Right. And there are too many people. You know, it's like whether you're white, you're Hispanic. Um, you don't need to allow Valentina Gomez to continue to go on this path because right. she's slamming LGBTQ. She's slamming gay. I mean, uh, blacks, anybody who will listen because she's trying to get votes at 25 years old. It's just like uh, Candace on, see, you know, again, people like Candace, right. when you got Candace on, or, you know, like uh, by, you know, you commented on the list of uh, the GOP, which I call like the reader's digest list of coonery. Uh, when you, when you comment on all these, this list of people, Somebody has to step to them, you know, and advocate for us, either mm -hmm. in the GOP. And, I, you know, that's why, you know, Michael Steele wasn't always a friend. Right. You know, he's the, but I do appreciate him on MSNBC mm -hmm. and, and and how he's stepped into, uh, I guess, the arena as the man of common sense. Right. Because <laughs> in a lot of cases, you know, Michael, Sting, Michael yeah. Steele, he was a Republican. He was the, the the head of the Republican Party, a black man. Right. And, and I'm so glad that he's continued to stay that course and try to bring common sense to the to these arguments. Right. Uh, last thing. Because, was, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Last thing was that, you know, it's like you were saying about even Clarence Thomas is the first <laughs> thing I was saying. Yeah. What is it about this country that makes people lose their ident self identity and and start to side with things that are uh against their best interest. Yeah. I, and I'm not and I'm not saying that inter you know you shouldn't love who you love and you know I'm not I'm not talking about anything about that. What I'm saying is is that how can I be you know the Asiatic black man <laughs> When I'm with my guy, Tommy B, and I'm with the country commentator. <laughs> but when I go to work, you know, I become Michael Steele. Yeah. Or, you know, I become Clarence Thomas when I go to work. You know, that, that whole code switching thing has to stop. And, and, and it's not just <clears throat> the people that look like me. You know, it's, it's a lot of minorities so-called minorities that do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like we have to belittle ourselves in order to fit this American mold. I mean, Nikki Haley, when did you find out Nikki Haley was Hindu? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everything about her does not say Hindu. 
Oh, absolutely not. So what you know I didn't find out until she ran for president. Exactly. Really. And that's my point. Is like, she was in yo, South Carolina. <laughs> like, oh, oh, ain't no way. <laughs> no, not at all. What? You know, uh, again, so that's what uh, that's my whole thing. Is yeah. like, look, can we get to I know it's I know sometimes I speak in very magnanimous terms <laughs> and you know it's why can't we all get along the kumbaya kind of thing, but because you're really. from the Daisy Age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I do. I they like soul. I like it. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> you know, I want. So I, I want big... everybody to get along. And, and kum, I, that I, right, I've always that been should... the kumbaya on the podcast. Exactly. But y'all exactly. make it hard. Y'all make Come it on. so hard. Come God on. damn. God damn. Y'all make it hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I ain't got no love, man. I'm sorry. You on that side? I ain't with you. Come on over here. Yeah, but you know, there, there, you there, there, you there, there was a poll this week that said, how many of you um, unfriend people as soon as you find out they're a Trump-like supporter? And I absolutely do. I do that. Because I, I don't even... Really? I mean, when I, oh yeah, when oh, I find yeah. out, I, 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 can't, I can't. That, I can't I mean, just because, gives me more, more reason to post by I, post to their page. I, well, I just, I don't think that way. Then. That's good. That's I mean, they're talking about they can mm-hmm. they can casually come across in the main feed, mm-hmm. but I I, I don't want to. If, if let me let me say this, it's not about if if that's you, but if you're posting stuff daily, if you're posting every day about Trump, I I, I just don't want to. I don't no, mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. I, Again, I, um, the, the, I unfriend you. I disassociate with you. Everything. I just cut you off. If you say you voted for him, but you're not posting stuff like you know and 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 agreeing with the crazy stuff, then then I can be cool with that. But but when you start posting like every day, there's a video and you know conspiracy theories. I just can't deal with that, man. That's just not me. I I, I mean you know because because even with Biden, I, I I call a spade a spade. Whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know. If I don't, if if he's wrong, he's wrong. When he's right, he's right. But but if you if you part of that cult that MAGA cult you can't I, we we can't be friends and that's what I was getting ready to say too and I'll end it on this note you know yeah. we we have a we need to go back and listen to the lyrics of Living Colors 1991 hit song Cult of Personality yes absolutely. because that's exactly what we're dealing with now you mm-hmm. know why are you so involved in any one man that you want to champion that man above yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all so, better... so far, so far ahead of his, I mean, that's, that song so far ahead of its time. Mm. Y'all are better it's... people than me. Once, I find <laughs> out, once you tell me you voted for Trump, I look at you and go, okay, right, we're, uh, we're, done, yeah. we're done talking. I'll let you, it's cool if you voted, but if go you're ahead. still out there, if you, yeah. if you MAGA cult, mm-hmm. I can't, Sorry. I can't, nah, I can't. Sorry. Uh, hey. If you voted, yeah, yeah, anything. I said, I can't cause I'm good. Come I mean, you either with him. To me, you can't be sideways with him because he is yeah. so against my culture. But you tell mm-hmm. me vote for the money, but you okay with him put me down though? No, yeah. not yes, you are because you voted to put him in there. He's not going to yeah. not put me down and just concentrate on the money. He gonna do. He's going to try to do everything he said he was going to do. Yeah, so yes. you put him in there anyway. So no, right. we're not down anymore. Right. Well, you, you know, wanna, a lot of people are short sighted. They don't friend. see the, They don't see yeah. what, how it impacts their kids. They don't see how it impacts. I their say, kids. If That's you want to stay my friend, do not tell me you voted for him. <laughs> Period. <laughs> that PSA. <laughs> We're done. Yeah, I hear you. Oh, hey, uh, my my takes, man. Just real quick. Rest in power, Willie Mays. Uh, I missed his prime. Mm. Uh, he retired in 1973, but I grew up a baseball fan. But I knew the greatness of Willie Mays, and, and oh, yes. definitely one of the greatest. Uh, Donald Sutherland, man, you know I'm a huge film nerd. Uh, one of my favorite actors, man. Really, I saw him in The Dirty Dozens. I remember him from Mash, the movie. But right, really, Mash. I remember him from Invasion of the Body Snatchers, man. That last scene was scary as hell. When he, uh, I was like, yeah, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> but. Really, rest in power. Uh, he wow. was, you know, of course, a lot of people didn't know he was Kiefer uh, Sutherland's dad, uh, mm. but but definitely a great actor, man. Yeah. And, and the other thing, I got to say this, y'all, and I want to end my last thing, really. God damn, Wade, stop. Get off these, inter- from Fanny, Fanny's, Fanny's uh, I guess, what do you call him, uh, buddy? Um, get off the interview yeah. tour. Stop. Yes. You're making matters worse. You're embarrassing this woman. 
Um, you're hurting. I just, you know, I don't know why. Can somebody, can one of y'all to answer why he's doing this interview tour, Wade, attorney Wade, why is he doing this? What's he, is he trying to sell a book? He's got a, probably got a book deal. It's money. I mean, probably got a book deal, but he's, he's more than likely getting paid for his appearances. You know, no, you think, you think CNN and some of these other organizations are paying him or somebody's got to be, <laughs> somebody, I would I like swear. to think that there is money involved because <clears throat> otherwise you're playing yourself for no reason. Yeah. Cause why, why would he, if he really cared for Fani, why would he even stay relevant knowing what's on the line? You know, people might be, and, and by you've had the conversation about the fact that, you know, it's, you know, this mistake and this lack of judgment hurt her, but why it continue is. to, it, it kind of, it's every time he, every time I see him in one of these interviews, it's a reminder of the mistake. It does nothing to benefit the well, situation. Well, it, I'm, I'm letting it go. If you, if you want, if you want to go to trial, just let it go. But if you, if you don't want to go to trial, then just keep bringing it up. But if you're on her side, let it go. Yeah, but I, I, I just, but I, but so. I won't defend what she did. I, I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not defending it, man. I just, I just. But, he needs like, to, but like I said, I don't understand. I, I don't understand why. I said uh, my thing is technically she didn't do anything wrong, but yeah. but she knew how 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 profile this case was going to be, and he's the ex president. You can't take a chance on nothing. Yeah. That's your personal life should have ended as soon as you took that case and took got until it was over. Yeah, if you, want, if you wanted to go through trial, you're gonna see it through. If you, I mean, because it's unfair, and but we know that. It's do you think? Do you think? Do, do you think? Let me ask you, just opinion. Mm -hmm. You think Fonny's like that? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you well, know she's she, regretting. You think she regrets? Oh, she yeah, regrets. Oh, she, oh, she, she regret. definitely regrets. She regrets all of it. I know she regretted. Now she regrets it. But you know, again, the thing, the thing that I want, that I want to just reiterate to all peoples who talk about this case mm -hmm. this was not her first choice Wade was, it was not the last. The first, was Wade the, wasn't he, the second he, choice. He was the last. Wade was, the last. was like number seven <laughs> on the list. It right. was dead. Right. You know, really, what it is is funny. Is like, baby, I, I, I don't can't have find nobody. Nobody to do this shit. Do this. He's probably like, oh well, shit, baby, I got you. You know what I'm saying? And like, you what a divorce. Do? Take let's, that let's get this handled. Mm -hmm. It was never about money. Nathan mm -hmm. Deal did not take this, and he was a, the, a Democratic governor of yeah. the state of Georgia, but he yeah. knew that stepping into this was going to get to Ugly. be a shitstorm. Yeah, you know to, what I they mean? They went to Roy Barnes, too. Oh. Roy Barnes turned it down. Oh, yeah. right? This is what I'm... Former governor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's so, my point. Is my, you, you, re, you reiterated my point. She knew how tough this was going to be, that she yeah. couldn't... Had, she had no room for any error of misjudgment. That's all I'm saying. And like I said, I don't, I don't fault her for anything besides that one judgment call. That's okay. Uh, she made a mistake. The judge is ruled on it. Move on. Yeah. She I admit, just, I just she hate admit, seeing, I hate she seeing him make this tour. I hate no. seeing him. He, doing he needs this money. He need, I mean, he need money. That divorce killing him. He need yeah. money. That's all. Yeah. That is. I got. I got. Because <laughs> he, he was making money until that happened. <laughs> Y'all, we took his money making from him. Now that you mention it. <laughs> you took his money making from him. He made money. Now that you mention it. He probably tell the fat fan, I'm sorry, but I was making money when I with you, and I ain't got, I'm not making any more money right now. You know, you nah, know how hard it for him to get a job now? Yeah. Just now that you mention it. Just the fact that he took that case on, but he done yeah. it for money, no doubt about it. Now, this is about hey, self-preservation. Hey, Vi, you just clarified everything. <laughs> As he does, as the we D word. The <laughs> when you bring up the D, there you go, and not the funny D, but no, no, yeah. no, 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 he need money because his wife yeah. trying to take it to him. Yeah, so yeah, you, you've you've clarified. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I love getting your feedback, positive or negative, y'all. Go to uh, castropolis.net, choose the people poll, uh, send us a voice message, and I'll play back the best uh, if you send it to me. And and also going forward, uh, any any episode under an hour, you can check it out on TikTok. Uh, and if you don't know where we are on TikTok, just go to at This Is The G Podcast. You can pretty much find us everywhere at This Is The G Podcast. 
This is the G Podcast. Don't just type in G Podcast. Got to put nope. in the whole thing. This is the G Podcast. This is yes. the G. Yes. And, and except on Twitter, where it's this is the G Pod because of the length of the name on Twitter. You can still find us. Okay? Give us a, a theme song, Boku. I ain't going to do what that. Time to be. Time to be. Time to be. Give us a theme song. I'm, you can do it. I, I, I'll, I'll do, I'll do the, the track and you do the lyrics. There you go. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, uh, let's so go ahead. Let's take a break so and we'll come back with telling, the tea. He, he's telling y'all it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's the cool, country commentator. That's what cool. It ain't gonna happen because he don't want country me to commentator. No he's <laughs> clarifying. Uh-huh. Oh, let's take a break and we'll come back with the tea. Tanya B. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, Vod. Hey, brother. Thank love you, people. Love my people. More. This is the G Podcast after the break. This is the Southern Soul Spotlight, brought to you by Team Airplay. Mr. R&B, V. Mark Williams is blazing his path in Southern Soul with the song Ain't Nothing Wrong. We asked him about how his producers impact the music. First off, thanks, Tommy B., for having me on the show. How did Kudal and DJ Funky influence me? Uh, I was influenced by the music. They gave me tracks that just spoke to me. They are really good at making contemporary tracks, and I'm good at writing lyrics and singing songs in the traditional way of doing R&B, Southern Soul. So it's a, it's, it's a really nice uh, combination. Go to themarkwms.com. That's T-H-E-M-A-R-K-W-M-S.com to find out more about Mr. R&B, the Mark Williams. This has been Southern Soul Spotlight, sponsored by Team Airplay. This has been the Southern Soul Spotlight, brought to you by Team Airplay. Now then, children, it's time for tea. It's tea time, y'all. Sipping the tea with Tanya B. Here we go, here we go. Yes, children, it is time for tea. This is your number one entertainment chick tanya b right here inside this is the g podcast this is how we do it each and every sunday you know what you gotta do you gotta like subscribe share go to the youtube channel check us out on instagram and every other social media platform but hey you're in the right place this is where it all goes down each and every sunday at 6 p.m eastern time let's just get right to your entertainment headlines first of all i gotta start out saying What's up, what's up, what's up to my hometown Boston Celtics making history with their 18th NBA championship. Let me ask you something, Tommy B. Did you know that uh, Jason Tatum had been booed up with singer Ella Mae since 2019? They're expecting their first child together. She was at the game looking very pregnant and very much like her back was hurting her. After we figured... Nelly and Ashante, the baby's coming. Yep, they've been married for six months, but we all knew that anyway. And Rihanna has a new job. She is the new spokesperson for Dior J'adore, the fragrance. After Father's Day, the Papa was in Rolling Stone Chronicles or something else because Jennifer Hudson just revealed her daddy was busy. He has 26 other kids other than her, and she is the youngest. So, <laughs> anyway, this week's Major League Trailblazer, uh, Willie Mays. Broke a lot of color barriers, did a lot to move uh, people of color ahead in the game of baseball, has gone on to heaven to play ball with Hank Aaron and Jackie Robinson at the age of 94 years young. We also lost the actor Donald Sutherland. He plays President Snow in the Hunger Games. He was in Animal House, MASH, and a lot of other uh, really uh, groundbreaking movies. Well... New York City Mayor Eric Adams said, Puffy, we want the key to the city back. And I guess Puffy said, oh, since I don't live there no more, I guess I better give it back. And that's exactly what he did. And in this week's Drunk Tank, we have first up Justin Timberlake talking about he had one martini out there in the Hamptons. He had one martini that he remembered. He forgot about the other five. Well, he thought he was going to get special treatment, and that did not happen because he's got to go back to court July 26th to fight the charges. Mm-hmm. And then we have mm, the other dumb donkey of the week, Travis Scott in Miami, acting a fool. At least he wasn't driving like uh, Justin Timberlake, but um, I hear there's more to that story, too. I'll keep you posted. Uh, do you remember the group from Philly? Uh, they were discovered by Grover Washington Jr. called Pieces of a Dream 
Original member, lead singer, bass player, Cedric Napoleon. Cedric Napoleon, yes, he sang my favorite song. My number's four by four. Yes, he just uh, went on to glory too at the young age of 60. Tommy B, can you believe the Bad Boys franchise has hmm, taken in over a billion, not a million, I said a billion dollars? That's what's up. Alicia Keys did pretty well to Tony's last week. Her play, Hell's Kitchen, won two. Uh, Tony it was, but it was really cool to see uh, her and Jay-Z opening up the show, just bringing some new flavor. And did you know that one of the torch carriers for the Olympics for the USA this year is going to be none other than Halle Berry, Halle Berry. Uh, and in case anybody cares, mm-hmm, not me, Charles Broccoli said, you know, because uh, Inside the NBA on TNT is coming to an end that he's going to retire from TV. Well, if he was counting on uh, King Charles to be his saving grace, that didn't happen. Did that last even six shows? Well, Charles, you can go ahead and retire because we're good. Our rapper, Remy Ma, my goodness, she's really been through it, but she's kind of been you know, making some noise here. But she had a son before she got sentenced to that uh, 10-year bid. And uh, her son is 23 years old. His name is Jason. He's been arrested for murder in New York. Oh, my goodness. I know every parent will stand by their son, but sometime <laughs> you got to be real about it, Remy. Come on, let's keep it real. Well, did you know that Jonathan Majors, Jonathan Majors, he finally got a job, y'all. But here's the gag. Now, he's in this movie. The plot of the movie is about a man who seeks revenge on the people who killed his girlfriend. That should be a very easy role for him. And I'm telling you, easy is like easy like Sunday morning. Mm -hmm, I'm just saying. Now, what's up with Serena Williams, Tommy B? Word from the curb is that allegedly, is she headed for a divorce? She's been married seven years to Alexis, the guy that runs Reddit. She's got two kids. But recently, she's been spotted without her wedding ring, which doesn't really mean a whole, whole lot. However, maybe she's been hanging out with Tyrese, telling too much of your business on social media. Serena, please stay off social media telling people that you're lonely. <laughs> That's all I got to say. That's all I got. I ain't got no more. It's your girl, Johnny B. This is how we do it each and every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. This is the G Path podcast with the cast of characters but don't forget go to the youtube channel like subscribe share check us out on all social media platforms and you can still catch the bird wire with me tanya b castropolis.net on demand not 24 7 but 25 8 be cool stay hydrated thanks tanya b thank you vibe to lead author and political analyst carol michael harvey big thanks to the crew millennial nick lady J, regia music by k-dub all those who help us make it happen every single week don't forget to subscribe turn on notifications for new episodes and a very special shout out to the family of derwin brown they did a big celebration this weekend shout out to his children brandy michael uh, and robert for keeping the Brown Legacy Alive. If you're not familiar with the uh, tragic story of Der- Derwin Brown in DeKalb County, go ahead and Google it. I think you can also do a search online at hashtag Brown Family. But, uh, you know, definitely um, just kudos to the Brown family, the kids, for keeping the legacy of life. And uh, if, you're into, if you're into Cab County, you definitely know what that's all about. All right, y'all, give the gift of YouTube. We need subscribers at This Is The G Podcast on YouTube. Go to castropolis.net. If you can't find it, the embedded YouTube videos there, just click it and you can subscribe from that point. And episodes are now available on TikTok. All the one-hour episodes or the one-hour episodes beginning just within the last few weeks going forward are on TikTok. And with that, episode 227 is in the can, y'all. Have a great Great week, peace, and power to the people. You've been listening to This is the G Podcast. And This is the G Podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.